Good morning, everybody. Do you like smoothies as much as I do? Mine's almost done. Watch me finish it. <clears throat> Just kidding, I don't normally do that. There you go. Whatever. Um, that's not what this video is about though, today. This video is not about me making a smoothie. This video is actually going to be about me making something else. My first cooking tutorial, I love cooking, I can't believe I haven't made a video yet about it, but this one is going to be about me making something that I've made so many times over the past year, maybe six months, since last summer, and that is a crumble. I make crumbles so much because they're so easy to make and they're so good. Um, I often make a, I would make a lot of blackberry ones at my parents' house because there's lots of blackberries. Recently I've been making lots of peach ones and now um, I just actually made my first apple one recently, uh, last week. And so that's what we're going to be doing today is making an apple crumble. Now I am taking one, two, three, four, five, seven, about eight apples just because I don't want these apples to go bad so I'm just going to use them all. You don't need to watch me cut them all. Okay, there you have it. Eight apples chopped. Hopefully you can see that. And oh yeah, we need to remember to turn on the oven to 350 degrees. Boom. Then, next thing. Get some orange juice, lemon, or lime works too. The accessory pretty much works for any kind of fruit you want to put in there. Just, you know, some fruits you might like want to change. I'm going to put a little bit of cinnamon in this. Um, if you're doing like a peach one, would be kind of weird with cinnamon, don't you think? Oh. Because I'm using tangerines or mandarins. It's gonna be easy to do by hand. Cornstarch to help thicken this up. There must be an exact amount that goes to the closer. Sweet, just a little, a little sweet. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So. A little bit too much cinnamon. What do you do? Whenever I'm cooking, I always just like go by feel, and so sometimes it doesn't go well, sometimes it goes really well. But it feels more like fun and natural that way. So that's what I do. I may have made a little bit too much, so we're gonna have to do it in two containers. You know what? I'm just gonna eat these so we can follow my normal recipe. day. Mm. So don't use eight apples. Five or six, probably perfect. Let me take this slurry, just pour it in there on top of the apples. Just like so. 
Now, here's what we do. But of course, <clears throat> take the Mr. Stand mixer with the salt bay on it. To this, we add four things. Butter, flour, oats, and brown sugar. Equal parts, oats, brown sugar, and flour, and then one stick of butter. So I do one cup of oats, one cup of brown sugar, one cup of flour, and then butter, tiny, maybe a tiny bit of salt to taste, and for this one, since we're doing apple, I usually do a little bit of cinnamon. I'll do just a pinch of cinnamon because I put too much cinnamon in the apples. One cup of flour, or one cup of oats. Almost. That'll do. Look at that. We have like almost exactly everything we need. But as you can see, for baking, I don't follow this like a science. It's, I don't even follow a recipe. Really. I mean, I do, but like, you, know, you can kind of just play around with it. This is not like baking a cake or, or cookies or if you mess up a little bit, you're done. Pretty forgiving. That's kind of why I like doing it. It's so easy to make so quick. I keep hearing about this Danish Kirimiri butter, and so I bought it for this recipe. Apparently it's good butter, but I've never had it. Let's see. It was like cheap. It was like five bucks for this. Ooh. How many tablespoons in a stick of butter? What would you like to... How many tablespoons in a stick of butter? Here's what I found from Simpla Scrumptia Seeds. Okay, yeah, it's just one of those little thick sticks of butter. It is eight tablespoons, which is normal, apparently. We could chuck it up into little pieces. I remember just a dash. You mix this until the butter is all mixed in, and then it starts making little chunks, like little crumbles. That's what I like to call crumble, right? So we mix it up until we get little crumbles in the batter. And then, pretty much ready to go. Okay, so you can make it to however consistency you want, the crumb, actual crumble part. I like it like this, where you can see there's little crumbly bits, but you know, it's not, all stuck together. Also, sometimes if I do it too long, it gets kind of thin. So look at where these nice little chunks, just like that, just like that. Yes, perfect. So, one more thing I'm gonna do before I put it in the oven is, um, I don't normally do this for other kinds of um, crumbles that I make, but with apple especially, like I think a buttery, buttery apple pie is really good. So. And also, um, I kind of overpowered it with the cinnamon in there. I'm just gonna put a little, a couple of slabs of butter um, in between the apples and the crumble part, just to be able to kind of soak down into the apples and make it a little bit more buttery and neutralize the uh, flavor of the cinnamon. Okay, so I'm just gonna do a couple small pads, a couple small pads, like, let's see, like one, two, three, four, not too much. Just like that. Boom. Then... Pour it on there. So 
think I crum clump it up a little bit. Get it a little bit more crumbly like. And voila. All ready to go. Take this bad boy, toss it in the oven for 45 minutes, give or take a little bit. I always start at 45. And then um, you just gonna wanna wait until it's a little bit browned on the top and there's some bubbles bubbling up on the side. So I'll see you guys in 45 minutes. Folks, it looks like we're done. Oh yeah. Looks beautiful. <laughs> there you have it. Apple crumble. Perfect.